Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 12, Part 3. Welcome to Part 3. In this part, we're going to see how to actually implement the self-organizing map main class. This main class takes the input neurons, processes them in the way that is consistent with the self-organizing map, and then picks a winning neuron. This is a winner-take-all strategy, so this is how it classifies. Whichever neuron has the highest output value, that is the winning neuron, and the group that corresponds with that neuron is the group that the input data has been classified into. We begin by looking at how this class is implemented. The self-organizing math class is dominated by two main functions. First is the constructor that you see here. The other is the winner function that determines which neuron actually won with the given input. We'll look at that in a moment. The constructor, you can see, initializes the main instance variables. We keep track of how many input neurons we have and how many outputs. We then create a weight matrix, which is essentially the output time by the neur input neurons plus one. We add one to the input neurons because we may have a synthetic input value. If we don't have a synthetic input value, it's going to simply be zero and it won't matter anyway. Then we create the output double array. This holds the output values from the neurons, which is going to help us to determine which neuron, which output neuron actually was considered the winner. This will be the same size as the output count. We also need to track the normalization type so that we can pass this to the normalization class so that we perform either multiplicative or z-axis normalization depending on which one was set. This is the self-organizing map constructor. Once these values are created, we can use the winner function, which is used to present data to the neural network and determine the winning neuron, which allows us to classify the input data. And here you see the first half of the winner function. We are passing in the normalized input, which is stored inside of the normalized input class. This is just an array of values that was presented and already normalized for us. We need to know which neuron has the largest activation value. This will be the winning neuron. To do this, we create a double called biggest that is going to hold the biggest activation value. We initialize it to the minimum value that is allowed by a double so that any value almost is going to be bigger than it. This causes it to get initialized the first time through the loop. We're going to loop over the output neuron count and we are going to obtain a row matrix for the for the inputs. We're going to then use the matrix mathematics to perform a dot product. Dot product is the usual way that you find out the output for a neural network. We are going to multiply the dot product by the normalization factor that was specified in the normalization input that was provided to us. So we normalize the output from the neuron as well. We then take the output from it and map it into a bipolar sort of range so that it is between the values of negative 1 and positive 1. And here you see the second half of the winner function. This continues onward from what we just looked at by looking at the output of the neuron that we just calculated. If the output from the neuron that we just calculated is bigger than the biggest value that we've encountered so far, then we need a new value for the biggest neuron activation value because the biggest neuron is going to be the winner. It's winner take all. So we, if this is the case, we set the biggest value to hold the activation of this largest neuron. This is the output from this largest neuron. We, hold, we set the value win to hold the actual index of the neuron that is now the largest value. So using, using win, we're going to essentially get a group number at the end that tells us which group or which neuron the data was classified into. We also do some processing on the output. We conform it to a certain range. If the output is less than zero, then we are going to set it to zero. If it's greater than one, we're going to set it to one. This 
moves the output neurons into a sort of binary range. Either they were active or they were not active. Usually we won't even look at the output. We care mostly about which neuron actually won, and that's the win value. This concludes part three. In part four, you're going to see how to train a self-organizing map. The self-organizing map is trained in a unsupervised learning fashion. This means we simply give it the data that we wanted to train with and it figures out for itself which groups it wants to classify the data into according to similar characteristics. We hope you will continue with part four. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.